Get to problem number five, uh, and it says uh, if there is initially 50,000 active nuclei for a substance with a half-life of 3,000 years, how many nuclei will be left after 15,000 years? So this introduces us to the topic of half-life radioactive decay. This is a very important topic because this is one way how we can find out how old something is. We can measure how many active nuclei are, are remaining, right? And if we know the half-life of the substance, we can work backwards to find out how old that substance is. When did that substance first begin, right? So if the substance began uh, with 50,000 active nuclei, what does it mean for the half-life to be 3,000 years? Well, after 3,000 years, half of it will be gone. Half of it will have radiated away. There'll be half as many active nuclei, right? So 25,000, half of 50,000 is 25. So that's, uh, we can kind of make a table here, right? This is active nuclei. And then this is, T is the number of years. So you can kind of think of it like a table like that. When it first began, zero years, right? After 3,000 years, right? There's 25,000 active nuclei. After another 3,000 years, that's 6,000, right? How many active nuclei? Well, half of 25,000, 12,500, right? After 3,000 more years, that's 9,000 years, right? What's half of uh, 12,500? That's 6,250, right? One more half-life, that's gonna be 12,000 years, Right? What's going to be left? Well, half of 6,000, that's 3,000. Half of 250, 125. 3,000, 125. Right? And then the question is saying, how many nuclei will be left after 15,000 years? Well, one more half-life, 15,000 years. Well, that's 1,562.5. So after 15,000 years, uh, 1,562.5. Nuclei, active nuclei will be left. Well, you can't really have a half a active nuclei, so it's probably 1,563 or 1,562. So uh, this is statistical probability that there's one a uh, little bit over that or under that, right? Well, what what's the other way we could approach this instead of thinking of it like a table? Well, we can kind of ask ourselves how many of these half lives fit into here. Right? 15,000 is five half-lives, right? So after each half-life, you're cutting it in half. So we can kind of do it more quicker like this, right? So I start with 15,000, and then imagine cutting it into five half-lives. Cutting it once, 25,000 years. Cutting it one more, 12,500. Cut it one more, 6,250. Cut it one more, 3,125. See, this is one half-life, two half-life, three half-life, four half-life, and then 1,562.5, five half-life, right? So almost like make a count. After one half-life, half. After two half-lives, another half, three, and then four, and then fifth half-life, this. The official equation for expressing this would be number of active nuclei, N0 to the minus T over tau, right? This is the math way of expressing this. N0 is the original number of active nuclei. So that would be 50,000. What's tau? Tau is the Greek letter to, uh, to signify half-life. So it's half-life is 3,000 years, right? Uh, uh, 3,000. Right? So if the time elapsed is 3,000, what's going to happen? 3,000 over 3,000 is going to be 1. 2 to the minus 1, what's that? After, if T is 3,000, you're going to have N is going to be 50,000 to minus 1, right? To the minus 1 is what? That's the same as 1 over 2, right? So the equation predicts that after one half-life, you will have half of 50,000, which is 25,000, uh, uh, 25, right? Well, 
How can we use this equation to solve it very quickly? The, the time in this case is 15,000 years, right? So n is equal to 50,000, 2 to the minus 15,000 over 3,000, right? So 15,000 over uh, 3,000, that's what? That's five half-lives. So this one cancels this. This is five half-lives. So n is equal to 50,000, 2 to the power minus 5, which is the same thing as writing 1 over 2 to the fifth. 50,000, 1 over 2 to the fifth. 2 to the power of 5, that's 32, right? Or you can have the calculator do that for you. 50,000 divided by 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. So 50,000 divided by 32, that's going to give you 1,562.5. So either way you look at it, whether you form a, a, a table and accumulate it that way, or you do it kind of quicker, uh, you just say how many half-lives is it, and you just do it like I showed you, or you do it the formal mathematical way, you're always going to get the same answer. The advantage of the mathematical way, this way, is if what if the time given is not a complete multiple of a half-life? What if they said, how many nuclei will be left over after 16,000 years, after 17,000 years? Well, 16,000 doesn't quite divide very well, uh, 3,000 doesn't quite div divide very well into 16,000, right? It's not a whole number. So this would be the official way of doing it if the number of years given is not a whole number multiple of the half-life, okay? Then you would do it this way and you would punch it into the calculator and you would get an answer. But if the number of years given is an integer multiple of this, then you can do it a quicker way without using the formal math equation, okay? So now you know how to approach these kinds of problems. Thank you very much.